All right, good morning, everybody. It's about one minute till seven, so we've got just a second for people to connect in through Zoom or through this platform. And for today's meditation practice, you don't need anything. Just somewhere comfortable to sit. Don't forget, get nice and comfy. Make sure your bladders are empty. And we'll give people just a moment to get digitally connected. All right, good morning, good morning. All right, wonderful to see you all. All right, so remember that these classes are always going to be available on Zoom, so you can be in a closed forum, or they'll be on the Facebook group. And then if you miss one, you can always go back and watch it on YouTube, unless they just do like a major blender <laughs> and decide not to upload it. But good morning, everybody. So today, I, you know, I was thinking last night, what do I really want to discuss and what do we want to do today? And at the end of the evening, a dear friend of mine sent me a beautiful quote that just fit everything that I was wanting to discuss. And the quote is from Ananda Mai Ma. And the quote says, anyone calling out for God from any land, in any language, in any age, remember, their cries reach this heart like waves of the ocean crashing onto shore. And I really love that quote because I was thinking yesterday a lot about what prevents us from that connection, that yoke. You know, we hear in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and different writings, even Crowley wrote about yoking. And what is a yoke? You know, if you just Google yoke, not yoke, Y-O-L-K, but Y-O-K-E. You know, it's this device that you attach maybe two animals together to plow a field. It's sometimes a garment. But when we talk about yoke, Y-O-K-E, in yoga, what are we doing when we're yoking? And what are the obstacles to yoking? So, first of all, when we think about the process of yoking, we understand it comes from a lot of different root words in Sanskrit. But if we look at it just from an English standpoint, the process of yoking can be looked at in many different terms. Reaching for divinity. Reaching for that connection of the unseen and the seen, realizing it, experiencing it, embracing divinity, being embraced by divinity, welcoming it, uniting with it, binding with it, reuniting with it, remembering it, feeling it, incarnating it, divinizing it, conjoining, connecting, contacting, absorbing it, being absorbed by it, contemplating it. There's so many different ways in which we can yoke. And when we look at the entire field of yoga, we understand this is the ultimate goal. N not the poses. That's not our goal. Our goal is to yoke with divinity. Well, if it was that easy, we would have all done it already, right? <laughs> we, we would just be done doing it and we would be complete. We would have already combined those elements and stayed integrated. But what are those obstacles? There's a lot of different obstacles that keep us separated in that longing, that wanting, that, ah, that practice that we do. And some of the obstacles, as I've discussed before, are physical obstacles. So in Ayurveda, we understand that when our five elements are out of balance, we've got space, air, fire, water, and earth. That when those five core elements are out of balance within our body due to lifestyles, due to 
food intake, that those can cause an imbalance in the mind. You know, if we've looked at some of our past courses, Charaka in the book, Charaka Samhita, describes the five modalities of insanity. And four of those modalities of insanity are food and nutrition and lifestyle related. When the elements got a balance, pitta, vata, or kapha, and those are related to the five elements. And when those go out of balance, it makes our mind go out of balance. And then our mind becomes either too dry and brittle, or our mind channels become too hot and goopy, or they become clogged. And that makes it difficult to unite or yoke with divinity. Of course, the fifth is possession, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> and then we have the unseen obstacles. You know, those are more easy to determine. Vata pitta kapha. I can look at your tongue, check your pulse, ask you a lot of questions, look at your diet and lifestyle and say, this is why you're having a hard time yoking. Because your antenna, your, your physical body is not conducive to that balance. But then we have the more subtle obstacles to yoking. And those more subtle obstacles are things like doubt, distraction, disbelief, disconnect, distrust. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, I don't trust God anymore. Oh. I don't believe in something greater than me anymore. And we're really living in an age where people are discouraged, where they are unaligned with that divinity. And that's where yoga takes us. We want to find that divinity, whether you think it's external to you or internal to you, it doesn't really matter. The end goal is that you connect with it, that you yoke with it. And that it begins to radiate out of every pore of you. Not only in thought, but speech and action. So what are the encouraging factors to yoke? Or to do yoga, as they say. Well, we need faith. Without faith, it's not going to happen. We need the desire for that unity, that joining, that absorption, that remembering, that reuniting. We need sincerity. You know, in our yoga practice and our meditation practice, sometimes it seems dry and boring. You know, we're just like this. Mm. 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 <laughs> it's no fun. It should be like trying to find your long lost lover. But your love is love of the divine. So serenity, that desire, but not the desire that causes disruption of the mind. And then we also want courage, love, calmness, peacefulness, and surrender. Because really the divinity is always there. It's constantly there. It's inside you, outside you, all around you. It's only what we do to resist it. It's only the veils and the weird glasses we put on to push it away. To say, oh no, that's definitely not part of me. Now I have to go on a quest and go find it. It was always there. We just have to release the obstacles to that embracing. So today, let's go ahead and keep these thoughts in mind. How is it that we yoke? Is it an embrace? Do we allow ourselves to be embraced? Is it a search? Is it an absorption? Is it a uniting? Or is it a reuniting? Is it a realization? Or was it always there and we just had to open ourselves to the subtle reality of it? 
So let's go ahead and set an intention for today. And you know, when we set a sankalpa, I like to set it as I am and then a noun. Something that you can already grasp and already believe. I am. Fill in that blank. Not I want to be or I wish for or etc. Solidify a sankalpa that exemplifies your yoking. Just take a minute. And really try those shoes on. I am. What is it that you are already? It could be something that you're working towards. But make it good. Make it juicy. Make it in alignment with your dharma. What is your soul's purpose? And then you need the passion to believe it. So just begin relaxing your body. Start softening your face. Letting go of any physical resistance. You know, it's us that tighten up. Our human minds that resist. And let the eyelids just be soft. Let the muscles around the eyes be gentle. Let your cheek muscles soften. Let the structures around and inside your mouth release any gripping. Let the back of your neck be nice and tall and aligned, but relaxed. And let your face be soothed. No troubles. No worries. There's nothing to do in this period of time except be embraced by divinity. Nothing else. All the thoughts that go through the mind contort our expressions. They're going to keep coming until you just dismiss them. So if thoughts start to arise in your meditation practice, kindly dismiss them. Say, please, not right now. You're disturbing me. You have the power to simply control those thoughts and say, no, thank you. Just like somebody knocking on your door. Not right now. Thank you. Bring your attention to your chest and start softening the tops of your shoulders. Relax your arms. You can choose to place your hands in chin mudra with your thumbs and first fingers together. Or you can just set them in your lap. However you want. Let the spine be nice and tall but relaxed. Let your legs be soft. Relaxed. And adjust your body at any time if you need to. Don't meditate upon the fact that your legs are asleep or your body is hurting. And bring all your attention to your breath. And observe. Observe the pattern of your breath. If we look at the pattern of our breath, it is usually a giveaway of how we're feeling. So just give an observation. How deep is your inhale? How easy is the exhale? Maybe you want to do a few deep breaths in and out through your mouth. <sighs> Letting go of any tension in the chest, in the mind, in the breath.
The breath can be a point of resistance. So let go of that resistance. And now let's really walk into the breath and begin observing the entire inhale. Directing all your concentration and thoughts to that process of the inhale and the exhale. Listen to the sound of the breath. Feel the subtle vibrations of the breath. And let the breath slowly become calmer and steadier, not controlled and manipulated, but steady, even. The exhale may be longer than the inhale. Let the breath become so delicious and steady it begins to erase the mind's desire to want to run off and think about things. Like a naughty toddler not listening to its mother. You are the master of your breath. You are the master of your mind. Control it. Bring all of its thoughts to your breath. Go even deeper into your breath. Breathe however you want, through your nose, through your mouth. Nice and steady with it. Let it have fluctuations in it, but keep all your thoughts on your breath. Concentrate on it. in purifying any resistance to your divinity that arise at the level of the breath, pranamaya kosha. Visualize that you're breathing in the prana, the life, inviting in, embracing in, being enveloped in that divinity through the breath at this stage. Let it be a remembrance, a reuniting in the absence of the mind's chackety chackety chack. breath become even more stable, not strict, but stable. Like an energetic field for you to reunite, re-remember, recultivate your yoke your yoking process. And I'd like you to continue that for 10 more full breaths in silence.
One more breath. Now just observe your body. Let it quiet down. Feel the stilling. Invite the stilling. I would like to do a process now of purifying the channel at the center of the being. It begins at the belly and goes up to the third eye. Some call it the Sushumna channel. And we can create a wider opening, a purification, a clearing process by the simple chanting of Om. If you would prefer, you can use Ma. If you would prefer, you can use Amen. Whatever fits you well. I'll be doing the Om. Just use your fingers on your hands. You don't need any other counting device. And we'll do 20 Om. So you can just count off on your fingers. And while we do this opening process, this purification process, visualize at your belly as you inhale. The word Aum as you exhale, moving up and then vibrating at the third eye. So when we inhale, ah, we feel lower in the belly. As we get to the U, ooh, we feel the purification through vibration at the chest and the mmm at the third eye. Or if you prefer, you can use ah, mmm, whichever fits you best. And we'll just begin in that process, 20 of them. I'll count off mine. Go at your own pace. Go at your own volume. Go at your own intensity. Make it wonderful. Uh... 
Just move into silence now. Aware of your physical body. Letting go of any resistance to that yoking. Aware of your breath. Letting go of any resistance to yoking. Aware and holding the stillness and the faith, the surrender in your mind to that yoking. And perhaps visualize the rays of the sun shining down on the top of your head. The ever-present light of God divinity, your soul, shining all the way through your body as a ray, and open to all resistance, letting that divinity in already in there. Let it in more. 
by yoking, remembering, uniting, free of resistance. And I'll place this on a timer. And we'll go for close to 15 minutes in silence. If the mind acts up, concentrate on your breath. You can go back into your own as well if you need to, to recenter, strengthen the mind to stay in a stillness of peaceful love, calm, faith and surrender.
now slowly deepen your breathing. Move back mentally. What was your sankalpa at the beginning of this practice? I am whatever that is. And if that sankalpa still fits, perhaps you'll choose to mentally, silently repeat that with each breath you take. If your sankalpa doesn't quite fit anymore, adjust it. I am that. Or as they say, Satanam. You will take 10 breaths. As you inhale, let your body release any resistance. And as you exhale mentally or even out loud, repeat your sankalpa. Last time, make it deep and heartfelt. Now bring your hands together and rub them gently. And place them over your eyes and face. Gently opening your eyes with your hands, still cupping your face. And bring your hands down to heart center. Circling back. Anyone calling out for God from any land, in any language, in any age, remember, their cries reach this heart like the waves of an ocean crashing onto shore. From Ananda Maima. And if it is that simple, why is it that many of us miss that connection? Why is the yoking so complex and difficult? Those obstacles of doubt, distraction, disturbance. We've discussed vrittis, those discomforts, those waves of disruption in the mind that separate us, the conditionings that we have, that say, we are not right now yoked with divinity. When we look at the word yoke, 
What are we reaching for? Why is it so far away? Why is it so hard for so many people these days? I like to think of it as an embrace. You know, when you leave the house and you've got all this busy stuff to do and your mind is engaged and you're like, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta get all of this done. And then you come home, let's say it's to a partner or an animal or a child and you just can't wait for that embrace. You're like, oh, how are you? And it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that embrace. But sometimes when we forget to have that sacred vision through the entire day, that everything has its sacred purpose, even if it's difficult. We get enough difficulties built up and we feel separate from divinity again. All we have to do is let go of the resistance. Let go of the gripping and the griping and give ourselves up that surrender. And it's not that we even have to give ourselves up. We have to give up the resistance to the realization that the divinity is already inside. It's just us obstructing the channels. So in Ayurveda, we understand that if we eat too much slimy, heavy, cold type foods like meats and flowers and dairies, it clogs the channels and the prana can't flow. It gets all gooey. Sometimes our brain gets gooey by life. We also understand in Ayurveda, if we eat too much dry, cold, rough foods that aggravate vata. Our mind channels also get cold, dry, rough. Just because you can't see the channels doesn't mean they're not affected. And how do we feel? How do we experience divinity when we're dry, cold, and rough? And then pitta is the element that is hot and wet. And when our mind channels are inflicted by too much pitta, well, then we feel cranky and pissy and hot and sticky. So when we take care of our anamaya koshas, our physical bodies, we realize, you know, if you were to design a temple, a beautiful temple, would you throw garbage all over the floor? Would you have a sticky floor? Dirty, muddy windows, hallways packed with newspapers up to the ceiling that you can't walk through. Well, when our physical body becomes malaligned, sometimes it's really hard to yoke. But some people will ask, what if I have chronic illness? What if I have so many physical problems and mental problems? Can I still yoke? I say all you need is the faith. And it can come to you in an instant. Some people think that the spiritual path is hard. Well, life is hard. <laughs> the spiritual path should come with immediate faith and surrender just to say okay i am that i am already divine in all of my strange appearances in all of my human things that i do we look at ourselves and we're like this i'm not divine enough that's garbage we're just in motion we have to always make little adjustments, little changes. The season changes and all of a sudden the temple's hot and steamy. And then the weather changes 
and it's cold and goopy. We just have to keep adjusting, adjusting. Political climate changes. Oh my gosh, so much disruption, so many vrittis. We just have to take time out each day and embrace that divinity. You know, like if you own an animal, you don't neglect it for a week and then suddenly give it a nice pet on the head and a hold and a hug and a love and a, a reuniting. But with the divinity, why do we wait for a once a month reuniting? A once a week contemplation. So I'll often say, you can get there really quick through your breath. The breath stabilizes the mind. Every hour, take two deep, delicious breaths to remind yourself of that divinity. And just feel it coursing through your body. Because in my opinion, it's not something mysterious out there that we're yoking and reaching for. It's like those two bulls or oxen in the field. And that yoke is that device that hooks them together. They're always side by side. They're never apart. So just remember, you're never separate to yoke. What does that mean? If we think of it as an embrace, we're already there. If we know it with faith and surrender, we're already there. All we have to do is call, think, and remember. And it's like the waves, they just crash into the shore. It's immediate. There's no work to be done. Thank you all for joining on multiple forums. I'd like to offer a prayer. And the mantra is one that reminds us that we want to embrace and yoke, to be led from darkness to light. To be led from confusion, illusion, to clarity. That we want to be led from physical mortality to spiritual immortality. Om Asatoma Sadkamaya Tamasoma Jotir Kamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari And repeat after me if you'd like. Peace for my body. Peace in my breath. Peace in my mind. And peace radiating from my soul everywhere I go. Namaste, everybody. I hope you have an inspiring day. An inspiring week, no matter what happens, be inspired. Reach, unite, and hold that faith that divinity is already spewing out of you everywhere you go. <laughs> Just aim nice and straight. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day.